Hello, my name's Dr. Simon Curtis, and today we're going to be looking at a horse uh, that has a prolapsed frog and very low flat heels. Uh, this is a horse with a six week shoeing cycle. This hoof is pretty good after six weeks, good angle, but you can see that his off four or right four is very low at the heel and has a lower dorsal angle. We can see here on the right four that we have a broken back or negative hoof pass axis in comparison with the left four, which is actually pretty good alignment, especially for a thoroughbred on a six week shoeing cycle. So you can see here how prolapsed this uh, caudal hoof is and the frog is hanging down through the, through the heels of the shoes but it's still not engaging the ground. This is an obvious uh, problem with shoeing at any time that we elevate the foot but in fact uh, the frog does need to engage with the ground during locomotion. So this is fairly typical of a collapsed heeled horse that these heels are running forward a long way but we have a big well developed frog because it's been taking some of the loading especially on softer ground. So we're going to trim it up a little bit, get the toe down, get the toe back but especially get the heels back. Getting the heels back is always a problem with low heeled horses because inevitably for every stroke of the rasp to get them back you are lowering, lowering the heels. Now he already has a negative hoof pass and axis, so there's a conundrum here between trimming the heels where you want them, but also making him more uh, negative, a uh, more negative HPA. But we're going to see a way of overcoming that. So you can see I'm ignoring the heels at the moment. We are going to trim them, but I'd rather do it with my rasp because as we know trimming hoof is easy putting it back on is impossible so you can see the heel coming back this heels here this heels immediately back here so just by a straightforward trim we are moving the bearing point backwards I'll do this heel now Shape the hoof up a bit. And you can see a bit of a crack there that undoubtedly is due to stress because he's loading the back of his foot so much. So the whole point of trying to shoe this horse bob in the correct manner is to move some of the loading forward and to take some of the loading off these heels. So we're going to pull the foot together as much as we dare because that will be good for him as well and then we'll select a shoe for him. So post trim uh, we've got his heels back we probably haven't changed this negative HPA because in getting the heels back obviously I've lowered the heel a bit more but I'm going to show you a way that we can get him to a straight hoof past and axis. So we've trimmed the right four the low heeled foot with the negative hoof pass and axis and it is still negative. We also have the problem that we need to re-engage the frog to have a healthier heels and unload the heels. Now the earliest way of doing this was with the heart bar and the heart bar really came back into use in the 80s and it was a great shoe and it, it enables us to take some of the weight off the hoof wall and transfer it to the, to the frog. But it does have its drawbacks and we do have better ways of doing that now. So one of the ways we can do it is with a, a pad which has a synthetic frog in it. So those, these are one of those pads. I hope you can see that. It has a hollow area, but this will be the foot side. So it's almost like it mimics the bottom of the foot. But if we just put that pad on, of course, uh, we would have a gap between the shoe and so we have to have a way of connecting this synthetic frog with the ground. 
And we do that with dental impression material. Dental impression material is what it says on the tin, but it has this great uh, elasticity. It resists compression. In other words, putting something that just could be compressed easily under a half ton horse doesn't do anything any good at all. Every step that this horse will take, it will load this and it will give it a lot of comfort in the back of the foot. The other thing we're gonna do is you can see one of these pads actually has, is a wedge pad, it's elevated. Now normally people are against wedge pads because they put more compression on the heel. But as I've said, we're already unloading the heel and the normal process is two shoeings with this pad, two shoeings with a flat pad, and then usually, in the best case scenario, that's the problem over with. What we have to do now is fit the pad to the shoe. We've, we've fit the shoe, we've burnt it on, we've got it ready, and now we put it on the pad and we get the heels in the place that we want. So in relation to the back of the pad. If we give this a tap with the hammer, we get a nice mark where our clip is, and then we need to cut back to it. Now, some of you might have band saws. I don't have a band saw in my van. So I'm gonna cut down here with cutters and then I'm gonna use my knife. So we've lodged that in there and then I'm gonna use a couple of the road nails that this horse has just to rivet the shoe onto the pad or the other way around, depending on the way you think about it. Then, the easiest way is to cut this with a traditional farrier's drawing knife, get it in against the pad. As I say, if you, if you have a, a band saw, you might want to do it that way, but a little bit harder on the wedge pads because they're getting thick. We're going to mix up the dental impression material and we need equal parts not to the microgram, but pretty much the way to do this is to get two balls of the same size. And then you know you've got an equal amount, yeah? So this is the easiest way to mix. Push it together, fold it, fold it. Push it together, fold it, fold it. I don't know if you've ever done that two times two times two times two. It doesn't take very long to get to a million layers. Now you can see at the moment there's still some white and some marbling in there. We have to mix it until the marbling has gone. So we keep mixing it quickly. We've got quite a warm day. It's probably 23, 25 degrees centigrade and for those of you that still think in Fahrenheit that's getting on towards 80 it's certainly very much over 75. So we do have to get a move on because this does react to heat, it goes off a lot quicker. In the winter, we're waiting forever. All right, let's go over to the horse. And this is what we do. We get our dental impression material. We brush the foot. So I've just given a quick coating of uh, iodine solution there because uh, obviously covering up the frog, we don't want to encourage infection. I've got to work quickly because as I say, it's a warm day and it will go off quick. Now let's get our DIM. Make sure you've got plenty in the frog, down the sulci. Don't block where the shoe is bearing weight. It'll all lose into the right places. Put this on. Make sure we're back in. You can see I've got some riveted nails and all I need is my nailing hammer, if we've got it somewhere. All right, so let's just put a couple of nails in. No 
another one in here. And then the most important thing that you do is put the foot down. <laughs> Come on, Bob, give us some room. And pick the other foot up. And you can see we immediately squeeze out the excess dental impression material there. So you must do that, it's really important. If you don't do that, you'll have a ball under the foot and every step he takes, it will be firm. So then we just wipe this off, leave a nice seal. You can do that before it's gone off and then you get a really good finish. And then you can finish the nailing. So we've used about the same amount of dental impression material. Always better to err on the too much side because it, you'll just squeeze it out the back. Nothing worse than putting the foot down and nothing comes out and you know that you've not got enough under there. So make sure you put enough under there. It's really not so expensive. So we're ready to go with this one. We've got the shoe fitted, pad riveted, iodine on the hoof. Let me just ease the sole a little. Okay, we're ready to go. Let's nail it on. Mm. If I, I'll put the dental impression material on the frog. Don't have it between where your shoe heels are going to be. Spread it out a little bit. There we go, we've got plenty on there. Two nails. Just to secure the shoe. Got to work fast because it's a warm day. Let's go around the other side, pick the foot up, and out it comes. There we go. Squidgy, squidgy, not quite as much as on the previous foot, but we give it plenty of time to squeeze it out. Plenty of weight bearing on it, so we're 100% sure that we've got enough squeezed out. There we go, stopped. it stopped oozing. Come around here. Wipe it off. Make sure there's a good seal. And then we can carry on with the nailing. Well, you can see after we have finished shoeing him, this side with an elevated frog support pad, the other side with a flat frog support pad, his HPAs are equal, and we have quite a good biomechanical shape. Uh, so just to reinforce the fact that we're not saying uh, this horse needs to live in these, this type of shoe or pad for the rest of his life, but we're going to see if we can get some improvement to that heel angle over the next three to six months. You can see a great improvement in both the hoof past and axis, and I hope you can see that we've engaged the frog with the ground. Uh, we'll monitor the horse closely with the owner, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments uh, box below. Otherwise, please like, share, and definitely subscribe. <laughs>